Today I'm going to show you how I made this 512 LED flip up DJ visor and syncs it to DMX. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, so check back later in the video for more details about their services. I started with one of these visors that you can get on Amazon or anywhere quite cheaply and that's already got a flip up face guard and a head harness so we can take off the yellow part and custom 3D print a piece to go on there instead so that we can hold a bunch of LEDs. So with that printed, I remove the existing visor with its screw threads and attach the new visor that's going to hold the LED strip. Now this particular model of visor has a couple of notches that you can put a screw in and that sets the maximum tip point forwards, then it won't tip forward too far and hit you in the face. I'm using an 8x32 WS2812 NeoPixel sheet and that's 256 LEDs. I left a space for the wires to go through so we can wire those on the inside and then I've stuck the whole thing on with double sided tape. So being sure to get it perfectly aligned there before sticking the tape down and being sure to get tension on it so there's no funny bulges. I'm running some test code there to check all the LEDs work and that's pretty much just colouring in random LEDs with random colour values. So that seems to be working pretty well, but as well as a place to put the electronics, this Arduino and some other bits and pieces, we probably need some more face coverage, so let's make some more bits and pieces. So that's just some test code testing all the LEDs running, but before we look at the real code, we're gonna have to sort out the power supply. So we've got 512 LEDs on here. Each one could draw 60 milliamps if the R, G and B are all on at once, which gives us white. And that means we could draw 30 amps maximum from this whole helmet. That's quite a bit actually. And if you remember the 720 LED visualizer, that could draw about 50 amps and I had a 70 amp power supply that plugged in the wall to actually power it. Now I don't really want that sort of power on my face. These do get slightly warm, not that hot, but I don't really want 30 amps through my face on a five volt supply. Now I'm using the fast LED library to control all of these LEDs and that actually allows you to limit power. So it will dynamically dim the LEDs the more you turn on to limit power to what you say. So in the previous parts of this video, I'm only running half an amp, basically 500 milliamps, and that's why it's so dim. So in this project, we're gonna limit the current to 10 amps using one of these regulators and power it off a normal LiPo that can go in my other pocket or somewhere or probably on a belt clip. And that means that we can limit the total current to basically a third of the brightness of the total of the LEDs if we were to turn them all on full brightness. And that'll happen dynamically dealt with by the fast LED library. Of course, if we only turn on the red or the green or the blue element in each of those LEDs, we'll still get them full brightness because that's only a third of the total. Or if we turn some of the others on full brightness, but we only turn on a third of the LEDs in total, we'll still get full brightness. Otherwise, it will dynamically scale to make sure we don't use more than 10 amps. So I think that's probably gonna do. So here are my electronics, I'm using an Arduino Mega and that's because there's lots of serial ports and that means I can use my Max485 converter and the RJ45 board again to actually get DMX data in so we can control some aspects of this with DMX and that'll plug right into the end of my big 720 LED visualizer. On the other board we've got the battery and the regulator and both of these have belt clips on so that I can wear them on my waist belt and I don't have to carry all this mass on my head. 
Okay, I'm gonna plug in the power. I've limited this to eight amps, because um, there's only a 10 amp regulator and I don't want to overdo it. So let's see what happens. Oh well, that's much brighter. And of course, all the LEDs are on at some points here. So if we turn some of them off, it'll be even brighter on the ones that are on, managing all that power to 10 amps. So this is just another pattern that's using definitely red or blue instead of random mixes of colors. And it's just turning it on or off every fifth or fourth LED in red or blue with a random offset and then turning some off. I need to do some proper programming though, really, and try and do something that cascades properly down the whole chain. This is a modification of the fire example, which I've modified to just color in the whole LED array instead of flickering like fire. So it cascades down all the LEDs linked together in a chain. So I'm just running a simple RGB cascade there, coloring in every pixel in order. And then when it gets to the end, it goes to red, then blue, then green and so on. And this is not using for loops anymore. So I'm doing this sort of multitasking, checking the times elapsed and coloring in the pixels, which means I can do other stuff at the same time, like read DMX data or read anything to do with button presses and things like that. I now have my DMX interface plugged into the little converter I made to the XLR which I used in the Visualizer project and we'll be plugging this into the end of the chain eventually using that same converter. So now you should be able to see lots of flickering white lights that are getting populated down all those LED matrices and I'm also using QLight Controller Plus DMX software so if I now fade up this fader which is the red channel for that LED fence we should see um, some red lights getting mixed in there now as they get populated. There's still some whites as well, so we should have white and red. And if I fade that down and fade up the blue, then we should see some, actually in fact that's green, we should see some green LEDs getting populated. Obviously the red ones won't go out because they're already set, unless they get turned off or overwritten. And of course we can do blue or we can mix any of the colours. So we should be able to get a nice purple if we put the red and the blue up there. It's time to give this a proper demo now with some proper lights and sounds and stuff like that. But before I do that, it's time for a word from the video sponsor, which is Surfshark VPN. If you go to surfshark.deal slash James and use a promo code James, you can get 83% off and another month extra free. Surfshark is a VPN solution, and that means it masks your identity online or makes it look like you're in another country in the world. That means you can access media and entertainment streaming services, and they will think you're located somewhere else. So for instance, The Hobbit is only available on Netflix in the UK, so if you want to watch it from the US, you can't unless you use a VPN to pretend that you're in a UK location and stream it from there. You can also use a VPN to get better pricing online. When you go and book a flight or book a hire car, that business knows where you're browsing from, what device you're using, how affluent you are perhaps, and they may know that you could pay a higher price. You can use Surfshark to get better prices online and avoid price discrimination. So don't forget, if you go to surfshark.deals slash James and use promo code James, you can get 83% off and an extra month for free. All right, now it's time to check out this DJ visor with some lights and sounds.
So in that piece of video, I was using Ableton Live to DJ up loops, and instead of using a control surface like this one with lots of buttons that represent the different loops, I'm of course using the barcode scanner guitar. And I'm gonna use that more in the future to control the rest of my performance robot show, all of the colors and lighting and robot motions as well, so I can essentially DJ music and robotic motions. That's the end of this video. Thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring the video. Don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe for more builds.